little turn and detour and have a look at what's making news in print and online this morning. And we're joined by the joyous author and ABC radio presenter, Lisa Leong. Good morning to you. Good morning. We always know you're going to put a smile on our faces. <laughs> happy There's Friday. There's some bad yes, news going around the place. So, yeah. yeah, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Now, this one here, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise known me. as Emma Rebellato, has been so excited all week about... Um, yeah, and like Costa Coglu. Yes. It's yes. Big it news. is massive. Yeah. So this is football history. So, of course, I'm sure most people know, Ange Postacoglu has signed on as the first uh, Australian coach in the English Premier League. He'll be coaching Tottenham Hotspur on a four-year contract, mm. which is massive mm. as well. Absolutely but massive. But you've seen this story that you really like about leadership mm. and what yes. we can learn from Postacoglu. And I think this is a great leadership lesson. He says, be yourself. And doesn't that just take us yeah. off the hook? Usually when it comes to leaders, sometimes we want to mimic them. Mm. You know, we want to be like them. And I think it's a really good lesson to get some self-awareness, know thyself. It's such a good lesson. Mm. And then play to your strengths. And uh, what a great story. It's in the financial review today if people want to uh, chase it up. Um, so what other than just be yourself, what else is he putting his success down to? So there's a bit of a Ted Lasso effect happening. Mm. And so I think part of that is treat everyone equally mm. so he speaks to everyone he treats everyone equally and he also has a really great attitude towards connection and I think that is definitely the Ted Lasso effect of humility and connection and empathy so what a great story you yeah. should be excited I am excited <laughs> well, I read this article as well it's, there were so many little things in there about having the answers and communication and language and there was also this great little bit where apparently he he's able to make people People believe in the unbelievable. Oh, so and he has a believe sign. And that's, and that's actually incredibly hard. Incredibly hard if you're not genuine in that, I think. Yeah. So um, clearly he's got all these, he's ticking all the right boxes. They've put, pulled him in because of his positivity and motivation. And of course, for his soccer attributes, his style of play. But obviously he's got these really great qualities that I think all of us can, mm. can look at and, and learn from. And that idea of believing. Mm. And so... It will ooze out of you whether or not you communicate it. So you've got to truly believe. And I think we all want to have that ray of hope. And, and if you believe in that, it can be such a strong part of leadership. So we wish him well. Certainly do. Hey, let's turn to the next story that you've got your eye on from the BBC, this mm. one. And it's about how young people are dressing At young work. workers. Mm. Yeah. So talk us through this. So... Uh, through COVID, I think we did learn that there was a blurring of lines mm. between home and between the office. And so we did see us relax into our workwear. So we all went to our tracky dacks and our comfortable clothes. Well, this is another take on this. So people are now using it to express their identities at work. And so maybe if you're into sort of different types of fashion, it becomes a talking point. And so rather than the corporate workwear, which was a little bit restrictive. I mean, I do remember when I was really Really a young worker and I got my first suit and I just remember going, I'm really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I just say, speaking of suits, yes. this is gorgeous. <laughs> so Thank what's you. the story with your suit today? Yeah, so I'm just embraced colour through COVID. I sort of decided I used to wear all black as a good Melbourneian and <laughs> basically I just went to colour. So that's one thing. And also working with others on expressing yourself through your clothes and wearing sneakers. So I think this is the best thing that I learned through COVID is I used to try and, you know, wear these little heels and I'm still really short, even if I wear heels. So why bother? So I've gone to the sneakers and I've noticed a lot more people wearing comfortable but expressive clothing. So I've embraced that as well. Oh, it's such an interesting area because, I mean, I love fashion. I love seeing what people wear. Colour is amazing. I love seeing colour. But also that um, that line between are you still looking professional and are, are you blurring the lines too much? Oh, that you is know? a good question. And I'd love people to reflect on that and say, has it changed in what way, mm. especially in their workplace? And do they agree with it or not? Because I think people have probably pretty strong opinions that workwear was meant to be workwear so that we all um, have a professional demeanour. But has that gone, mm. you know, sort of by the wayside? Now, speaking of, uh, of COVID 
and a lot of people embraced pets during COVID. Yes. And have had the difficulty coming back to work and leaving their, their pets behind. You've b spoken about uh, about your... Buttons, the yes, your buttons. And I'm trying to convince you, Emma, to allow <laughs> me to bring buttons to the workplace. He's very, very well behaved. He does get a bit excited. And I thought we might take a mentoring moment from Buttons, mm -hmm. the Labradoodle. Yes, what is that? Are you ready? Your, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. ready. Okay, I'm, I'm so primed. it is. Sometimes he's just really silly. Uh -huh. And so I think the lesson is rule number six, um, which is don't take yourself so seriously <laughs> at work. So just be silly. And, and this is Buttons with a really crazy grin on his face. Love it. You know, it's, um, it's interesting because I'm working with a lot of the Muster Dogs participants yes. ahead of the new series. Brilliant. And the number of times I have heard them describe their dogs at various times as goofy. And I just love it. And it spreads that feel that vibe of being around goofiness, actually it's okay to be a bit goofy. It is mm. great and it's great to be silly sometimes, to have a silly grin and just, just have fun in your life as well. So, Hot so tip, many we have a bit of mentoring. goofiness on this program, <laughs> don't you worry. Some of it happens on camera. Be goofy. Yeah. <laughs> hey Lisa, thanks so much for coming Thank in this you. morning. Thanks, Thank Lisa. you, good to see you. Uh, well, Alice Springs has come to life with the Fink Desert Race Festivities.